Greater plotting. In this video, we will discuss the relative motion rules. The objectives for this presentation is one, we're going to define relative motion. Two, explain and demonstrate the seven relative motion rules. Explain the upscope and downscope contacts and define and demonstrate the across the scope or limbo contact and why it is going faster than our own ship. In the American Practical Navigator, Bowditch defines relative motion as relative movement. Relative movement, motion of one object relative to another. The expression is usually used in connection with problems involving motion of one vessel to another. On a radar, we are always in the middle of the radar, and we're moving 5, 10, 20 knots, and all these contacts are moving in relation to us or relative to us. We're not seeing the true motion of the contact. We're not seeing the E to M of the contact. We're only seeing relative motion. So this is why it's very important for us to understand relative motion. Relative motion or relative movement. Two vessels moving in relation to one another or relative to one another. This is my heading flasher on the radar indicating that we are heading due north and let's say we're going 20 knots. We are always right here on a radar. It looks like we're stopped but actually we're moving 20 knots. So this contact is not moving in their true direction. They're moving relative to us and they're going to be tracking down this relative motion line. This relative motion line shows how far away they're going to be from us at CPA. For us to understand what our obligation is under the steering and sailing rules, we need to finish the triangle. E to R is going to be our true course and speed, R and M, the relative motion line, and E to M is going to be the contact true course and true speed. And the EDM of the triangle gives the aspect of the vessel. So we are right here on the radar. <clears throat> we see the red light. So what's happening, this contact, this EDM is crabbing down this relative motion line. They're going to crab down this relative motion line. You will still, still see a red light. 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 Here you'll see a red and a green light. And here you will see the green light. There are seven relative motion rules. These come out of Pub 1310, the Radar Navigation and Maneuvering Board Manual. I'm not going to read every one of these rules to you. You may want to pause the video, read the rules, and but I'm going to explain each one of the rules further on into this video. So why is relative motion important? As part of our situational awareness, it is important as a watch officer to be able to understand and control relative motion for collision avoidance purposes. Because relative motion rules are for stabilized radars. To stabilize the radar, we need a gyro. So either a stabilized north up relative motion radar or a stabilized course up relative motion radars, these relative motion rules apply to these radars only. Before I get started, let's define what an upscope target is and what a downscope target is. Everything is in relation to our heading flasher. So an upscope target with the heading flasher heading north, anything heading in this direction would be up the scope. 
up the scope, up the scope. Conversely, a downscope target will be any contact moving in this direction. So let's take a look at relative motion rule number one about upscope targets. It says if we alter course, the contact will turn opposite to our own ship. So we alter course to starboard, and it's going to make the contact look like it turns the opposite way or it will turn to port. What this looks like on a radar or on your plotting sheet, here's our basic plot. Here we're going to stabby swing R to starboard, get a new R prime. I believe from an earlier video, this new course was 042 degrees. So when this contact tracks down this rail to motion line coming down the scope, when it gets to MX, we alter course to starboard, it's going to make it look like it turns to starboard and tracks down that new rail to motion line. Relative motion rule number two, down scope targets. Contacts turn same direction as own ship. So if we alter course to starboard, the down scope relative motion of these contacts, they will also appear to turn to starboard. This is the rule we use to find that new relative motion line when we have to parallel MX to M06. If you look in the glossary of terms in pub 1310 and look up the word limbo, it says C across the scope target. So what an across the scope target is or a limbo target, it's any contacts relative motion is going perpendicular or at a right angle to our heading flexure and they must be going faster than we are. So you see a relative motion at a right angle to our heading flasher, and they have to be going faster than we are. Before I explain why they're going faster than we are, on the limbo target, if we alter course to starboard or port, it's not going to affect them very much. It's not going to affect them until they become an upscope target or they become a downscope target. Then rules one and two will apply to them. So why is an across the scope target or a limbo target going faster than we are? Here's the relative motion of the contact. They're at a right angle or a 90 degree turn to our heading flasher. To find out why they're going faster than we are, we have to finish the triangle. We must put in our E to R, our true course, and our true speed, or our true motion. Then we need to complete the triangle with the contacts, true course, and true speed, or their true motion. You can see that the contacts, true speed, is a lot faster than our true speed. And it really makes no difference where I put this E. I can put the E right here or I can put the E down here and they will still be going faster than we are. So an across the scope target or limbo target is any contact whose relative motion is going perpendicular or right angle to our heading flasher. In geometry, this is called the apotheosis of a right triangle. Relative motion rule number four, own ship increases speed. If own ship increases speed, all relative motion will move down scope. These are relative trails. Contact A is moving down the scope. If we speed up, it's going to appear that it also moves down the scope. Contact B is moving up the scope. If we increase speed, it'll appear that it turns down the scope. Contact C is also moving up the scope. 
if we increase speed, it will appear that it turns down the scope. This time our own chip is going to reduce speed. This is zero knots, this is 20 knots. Now we're gonna reduce our speed. So when we reduce our speed, all relative motion will move up the radar scope. These are relative trails, the contacts coming down the radar scope. If we slow down, the contacts gonna appear that it's gonna move up the radar scope. Contacts B, relative motion is coming up the radar scope. If we reduce speed, it's going to look like it moves up the scope as well. Contact C, relative motion, we reduce the speed. It appears that it moves up the scope. These contacts never really change. We're, we're maneuvering and they're moving in relation to us. Maneuvering against relative motion. Contact A, we can see that their relative speed is fast and their true speed is fast. It's gonna be very difficult for us to maneuver against this contact. We're gonna to have to move maneuver well in advance and probably make a bowed course change or a bowed speed change in order to maneuver against this contact. In contact B, it's slower than we are. Then it's essentially, we are in command of the situation. We have more time for situational assessment, more time for situational awareness. We can pick when and where, how much we want to alter course or how much we want to alter speed to. So to review the objectives, we defined relative motion. We explained and demonstrated the seven relative motion rules. We explained upscope and downscope targets, and we defined across the scope our limbo contacts and why they are going faster than we are.